In the mid-1990s, he was an aide to members of the House Financial Services Committee, weighing issues like Glass-Steagall reform and interstate banking rules. Now Brian Gardner is head of Washington Research at Keefe, Bruett & Woods, the investment bank that focuses exclusively on the financial sector. Brian joins us now from our Washington newsroom. It's been a long haul, Brian, but it seems that by and large what we've been hearing is that this is not as bad for the financial industry as some were expecting. Uh, tell us sort of the, the high points of, of where it could have been worse and is not. Well, especially going into last night. Going into last night, we were waiting for the Volcker rules, which we got, and the derivatives rules, which we got. And people were really worried that they were going to be more restrictive than what we actually did uh, produce last night. Don't get me wrong. There, there, there are restrictions on banks, and it's going to be tougher for banks to make money coming out of this. But the Volcker rules do uh, provide some de minimis opportunities for banks to uh, engage, uh, to invest in hedge funds and private equity funds. The derivatives rules, which everybody thought was going to force the derivatives business out of a bank sub into another affiliate, there was a compromise that, and a lot of that business is going to get to stay in uh, in those subsidiaries, not to mention that the clearinghouse provision, which I, I think is the really big part of the derivatives business, which is forcing the most standardized contracts to be cleared in central clearinghouses rather than through the dealers, um, the dealers are actually going to still get to own part of those clearinghouses. So th the business is being shifted around, but it's not quite as bad as, as it's going to be. So I'm, I'm curious about um, when you look at the vocal rule specifically, what, rule, what role market making is going to play? There seems to be some confusion about that as to whether banks are going to be able to take positions on behalf of clients, whether they're going to be able to make markets in the same way, uh, or whether there, there's going to be an exemption for that so they can keep right on doing it. The way that the language was offered last night, I think, does create more confusion than what we were expecting uh, on, on this particular point that you make on market making. The the language that would have specifically said market making was taken out, and uh, or I should say it was for customer facilitation was taken out. And you can still do market making, but it's a definitional issue, and it, it's very unclear about exactly how it will work out. Um, I, I think that's something that the regulators are going to be looking at um, uh, as they uh, as they implement it. And, and just to make the point that they they're going to conduct a study on, on these rules and then write the actual rules. The study is in the next six months, and then they have nine months to write those rules afterwards. So we're going to see the, these new rules evolve over the next year, year and a half. It's not immediate. And, and do you think that, that Wall Street has confidence in the regulators to write rules that are reasonable to, to their interests? I wouldn't use the word um, uh, confidence. I think hope at this point is the best they can do uh, because they really don't have any other options. I think the political situation for the banking industry in general, especially the larger banks, has really significantly changed in the last two years. Uh, I think we see the, that in the way this legislation was written. Um, the banking industry does not have the same political clout, and the regulators are reacting differently. Uh, they're more worried about the reaction up on the Hill than they are from what they're hearing from the regulated entities. So I, I think it's hope that the uh, that the uh, the banks are going in, but not a ton of confidence. Brian, uh, just very very quickly here, is this much more negative for the retail banks, the ones that deal directly with consumers? Again, just about 20 seconds here. Yeah, I, I think on that side, because the unknown of the new Consumer Protection Bureau that's coming into play, not to mention that some of the smaller banks in retail, the, the added costs, I think, is is bigger hit for them than it is for the larger banks that can absorb those costs a little bit more easily. Okay, Brian Gardner, thank you so much for joining us. He's head of Washington Research at Keefe, Barrett, and Woods.